Angelic Conflict, The Day of Salvation, by J.C. Ligar, Part 2, read for you by the author. It is written, Sin shall not have dominion over a Christian, for they are not under the law, but under grace. All his sins are put away by his blood. He is a new creature in Christ. All the old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He is sanctified, set apart by God to a holy purpose. God himself has adopted him as a son. Enough! He is not worthy! He will fail! He will fall! God will cast him out as he did us. All that God the Father has given to Jesus shall come to him, and those who go to him he will in no wise cast out. Also, it is written in Psalm 37, 23 through 24, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. That's just it, Hitty Kill. He's not a good man. He's a vile sinner. It is written, He is perfected forever. He is complete in Him and declared righteous. He is forgiven of all trespasses and sin. Stop this nonsense. God can't possibly love this human so much. What can God do with such filth like him? Here is what the Word of God says about what God makes a Christian. This man is now a son of God. He is a member of the body of Christ. God calls all believers the Bride of Christ. He is a chosen generation and a peculiar people and a royal and holy priesthood. Plenos, do you remember the beauty and splendor of heaven? You know we do, damn you. Our curse is we can never forget, even now. The Lord Jesus is preparing a mansion for this man in his father's house. He is now a heavenly citizen and is seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He is a fellow citizen with the saints, a member of the household of God. He is an ambassador for Christ and the inheritance of Christ. He has an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven. He is made able 
to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light. You cruel, pompous, sanctimonious hypocrites. You would dare have us believe that the idea of these humans filling heaven like an infestation of cockroaches doesn't fill you with revulsion? That God would demand that we angels who are high and lifted up, that we would humble ourselves and serve humans as ministering spirits is degrading. How can you abide it? God loves humanity, and we love God. Therefore, we love what He loves, and we humbly submit to His will. Besides, you're the ones who turned your back on God. He wanted you to serve Him by serving humans, but instead you both wanted to rule over them and have their worship. God wanted the angels which were first to serve humans which were last, and for we who are strong to serve these worms who are weak. Never. I'll burn in hell first. But just as I turned my back on God's will, so will he. Mark my words, he won't last. It won't change the fact that he is a purchased possession. He is sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. His body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. Do you really think that we will just give him up? We have invested years enticing his sin nature with the lust of this fallen world. He belongs to the kingdom of darkness and is polluted by this world system. It is written, he has overcome the world. He is delivered from the power of darkness and is translated into the kingdom of his dear son. He has escaped the pollutions of this world. His faithfulness won't last. He will deny Christ one day. He will not stay committed to God if he must suffer for Christ. Perhaps, but this man has a committed God who wants him to rule and reign with him. But if he denies Christ, then Jesus will deny him the reward of ruling and reigning. If this man loses his faith, Yet Jesus abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. His salvation is secure because he is kept by the power of God. He has no hope to live this godly life. He is a shell of putrid pus waiting to explode with the corruptions of sin. He does not have 
it in him to serve the living God. For at his core is a sinner. It is written, He has a lively hope by the resurrection of Christ Jesus from the dead. He is a partaker of the divine nature, and He is united to the Father and the Son. He is placed on the foundation of Christ, and He is now a living epistle. Silence! I will hear no more blasphemies. Here is what the Word of God says that the Lord Jesus Christ is to the believer. He is called our propitiation. He is called our life. He is called our head. He is our advocate. He is our brother. And the Lord Jesus calls all believers his friends. Come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Here is the love of God summed up in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. But Dunamis, his sins. Sin is no longer the issue. This man has redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. He has access to God. When he'll sin, he will confess his sins and rebound. Christ is the advocate with the Father in 1 John 2, 1. And he now has the peace of God. He is now born of the Spirit. He is holy and without blame before him in love. He is light in the Lord and a king and a priest. Enough! I can't hear any more. He doesn't deserve to be saved while we are damned to hell. I hate you all! The two fallen angels, Planos and Therion, plunge headlong into the abyss of hell in complete defeat. Now they must face the wrath of the destroyer. He is a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue his name is Apollyon. Why do you appear before me empty-handed? My Lord, we have failed. We have lost our assignment to Calvary. No! 
fools. How could you allow him to slip through your grasp? He was just an insignificant soul for us to torment in hell. Now he's a real threat to us. We have the world, the flesh, and the devil to distract him from God's calling on his life. You were his familiar spirits for years, so you must know all of his sin patterns and the weaknesses of his flesh. Tell me now your strategy to distract him from God. My Lord, we have complete control over the world system from its entertainment in movies, music, and video games. We bombard humanity daily with sexual perversions, blasphemy, and violence. We promote and glorify alcoholism and drug abuse. We are in the schools teaching doctrines of demons through Darwinian evolution. We eat away at the core of their souls and reshape their morality. We teach good is evil and evil is good and that there are no absolutes against this kind of mind control. He stands no chance for living holy before God. My Lord, his flesh is susceptible to sexual lust. Women will be his undoing. Married or single, it matters not. Pornography is another weakness and will be a thorn in his flesh till he dies. I will get him to fall into fornication and bring adultery into the church. Then we'll expose him and ruin his Christian testimony. If he lives in sin, maybe he'll commit the sin unto death. If God kills him for us, then our problem is solved. <laughs> Make sure he reads only counterfeit New Age versions of the Bible and not the King James, which God has preserved. Keep him from prayer and Bible study and witnessing about his faith. Whisper into his ear that you don't need to go to church to be a Christian. There is a war for souls between heaven and hell. Our time is short, so attack him for all your worth and don't, don't fail, fail me, me again. again. My name is J.C. Ligar. I am the writer, artist, and the publisher of this comic book. I am happy to announce that I am celebrating my 21st anniversary of me giving my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I can honestly say that my only regret is that I didn't do it sooner. 
You may wonder why I make Christian comics and give them away for free to anyone willing to take the time to read them. It all has to do with my world view. I believe that all humans are born sinners. If you've ever lied or stolen or had sex outside of the marriage bed of one man and one woman, or used the name of Jesus Christ as a curse word, then on Judgment Day you'll be found guilty before a holy God and damned to eternal torment in hellfire. I don't want that for you, and neither does God. So he sent his only begotten Son to die on the cross for our sins. And he rose from the dead on the third day. If you believe and receive him as your Savior, then you'll be saved from God's wrath. It's what I did 21 years ago, and it's what I hope you'll do now. God bless you as you make this eternal decision. Forever in Christ, J.C. Legar. Dear Christians, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. My friend, the enemies of your soul want to keep you distracted from the Great Commission to seek and save the lost. We will overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Remember, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Special thanks to my co-worker, Brian Alexander, who let me use his image to draw the angel Hittikill. Hope you like being in a comic book, bro. This has been Angelic Conflict, The Day of Salvation, Part 2, read to you by J.C. Ligar. Hope you liked it, and if you did, smash that button.